All right, so it has been a pretty good while since we have done a battle box video. Obviously, about seven months to be exact. So rather than just dragging them out and doing one a week, we are just going to do seven all at once. I already have everything like sectioned off into groups and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to go through everything that came in, all seven of these battle boxes, and see what we got. So the first category we are going to look at, and probably really the one that most people care about, is the knives. Looks like we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine knives in seven different boxes. So that's pretty good. Let's look at uh, let's look at this one first since it's already out of the box. This is I don't know what uh, brand this is. This is a really uh, really weird one. It comes in the sheath. Oh, it's a Topps Poker. It's like a small like weird. It's got this like pinky hook thing, and it's just a very small flat blade. I don't even know what you would use this for exactly. I'm assuming it's called the Poker because you can poke with it. <laughs> I got a piece of paper here. I mean, it's sharp. I don't know, very, very odd. Kind of small. I don't know exactly what you'd do with it. Uh, maybe wear it as like a, like a neck knife or something maybe. Although it has these loops, like it's supposed to be on your belt. I don't know, it's kind of weird, kind of cool. Next, let's go ahead and look at this Revo Journey. This one, oh. Some pretty nice stickers. I might actually put that on something. So you got this fixed blade with a nice beefy clasp that you can undo. You could put this on like a with like a backpack strap, on a belt, on I mean strap it to really anything. Oh yeah, it also has a, a slide lock on the top. That's pretty cool. It's also a fixed blade. Has really cool uh like handle scales, you know, nice and black and orange. Feels real nice. Might as well do a little paper test for each one of these. As you would expect, brand new, razor sharp. It's got a nice thick spine. It feels really good. It's kind of a smaller blade, but it feels really good in your hand. This one is called Revolt Reflex. Let's see what's in here. What do we have here? Oh, that's weird. The whole thing kind of like... I don't even know. The whole frame kind of rotates, and I guess maybe I—I'm <laughs> gonna be honest. I hate that. That is so stupid. So this just opens up, and then you have to click it like that, and then pull this out to undo it. I do not like that at all. I'm sure it's probably sharp though. Yeah. As you would expect. This is this is, I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen a knife where a part of the handle moves to become a uh, part of the locking mechanism. That that just seems I don't know. There's something about it I don't like. Next, let's go with Fox Edge. Oh, that that is beefy. I like that a lot. Ooh, that's a. <laughs> That, that's a nice, a nice pocket knife. It has a glass breaker on the bottom. You can cut something with that. I like that. That's nice and smooth. Look how smooth that is. I like that a lot. I'm a, I'm a big fan of this. Fits in your hand perfect. Oh yeah. I like that. That is really cool. It does have that glass breaker on the end. I wonder if we can find some glass to break. Let's try out the old mason jar here. Ooh, that really dent. That was really close. I should have hit that harder. Ah, got to put your purse down and hit it. It's putting deep divots in the glass. Ah, I thought I got cut there for a second, but we're all good. Glass breaker works. So next, let's go with Lord and Field Trading Company. <clears throat> On. Get out of the box. Okay, this actually looks like a very nice leather sheath. It's got a little, it's got this kind of loop thing on it so you can put it on your belt loop, or I guess really to anything. It's got a lock there. Ooh, the shape of this almost looks like a, um, almost looks like a <laughs> It almost looks like a sharp butter knife, to be honest with you. It's made of 440C stainless steel. Razor sharp, I am sure. Ooh. 
think that speaks for itself. The handles are actually maybe a little bit too smooth. They almost, they almost feel like you could like slide out of your hand, but they do feel good. And it feels really good in your hand. I really like that. Let's see, what's this right here? War, Kitchy Warpath Blades. I would expect something good out of this. All right, pretty good start. Blue handles, I like blue. It's a nice little small knife. It's got some type of like, I don't know, some type of protective coating on there. Nice and sharp, it feels good. This grip, whatever these scales are made out of, this is good. It, this has like a really nice, it almost feels like a, it almost has like a chalky type of feeling to it almost. Has a real, it really grips onto your skin. I like that. I, if this type of texture was on that last knife, that'd be really, really nice. I like that. That's not a very, that's not a very secure, it, <laughs> that is not a very secure sounding click. Mmm. That's never good. Yeah, maybe, maybe it doesn't come out as easy as I thought. Uh, it takes a little bit, but it will come out. I don't really like that. And this sheath, I would assume, is only going to get looser with age. So that's going to make this thing really just fall out super easy. I like the knife. The sheath could be better. Testing that sheath, maybe you want to go back to this one. The one, I think this was the first or second one that I just looked at. That is a, that is a secure click. Let's see. <laughs> I just brag about it and brag about how secure it is and it still can fall out. I mean, it, it still comes out, but that, that takes quite a bit more. You'd have to be doing something extravagant to make that one fall out. Let's see which one we want to go next. FB knife or Chibs? Let's go with Chibs. Let's see what Chibs has to offer. Oh, there's a little patch. Williamson, Copenhagen. Don't know what that is. Pocket clip, or maybe an extra pocket clip. Ooh, I like that. That's nice. That's a really cool design. That's smooth too. That is very smooth. Feels good in your hand. The body feels a little cheap. You can kind of squeeze it together and it kind of, I don't know, something that it feels, there needs to be more weight in the handle, I think, because it kind of just feels like uneven or something. It's not my favorite. It's all right. It'd be better than nothing. Now I guess we'll see what FB knife has. Oh, I like this. I like this a lot. These handles are nice and grippy. They feel great in your hand. I think this looks like it's maybe supposed to try to imitate a Benchmade 940, maybe? I think that's the model that looks kind of like this. It has this, Benchmade has the, have these uh, little slide locks that you can just pull down. Perfect size, fits in your hand, perfect. Is it dull? Wow. Dull, like really dull. That's kind of a surprise. I wouldn't expect a brand new knife right out of the box to be dull. I mean, other than being dull, I like the look of it. I have to throw that on the sharpener or something. Finally, the big one. Dead fish. D-E-D, -D, dead fish. This is like a, <laughs> this is like a meat cleaver or something. I don't know exactly, I don't know what you would do with this. Maybe, I mean, I can't imagine this would have any purpose in the wild, like a cooking thing or something. This thing is massive. It's super heavy too. Wow. Not crazy sharp either. These last two knives are just not, not that sharp. Wow. 
So if you get this, you'd have to, you definitely have to put your own edge on it. It feels kind of sharp, but I can kind of feel that it's whoever sharpened it didn't really do that great of a job. I mean, other than that, that's something that can be fixed relatively easy. It's a cool knife though. So now we're going to move on to lights. So the first one is this, uh, the Mammoth Hybrid Solar 400 Lumen Light Charges Mobile Devices. Solar, hybrid solar. Oh, so that's what they mean when they say solar. It's got a little solar panel on the back of it. Oh, and the head is flexible. Looks like it's got, oh, a full USB, a micro USB, the light, oh, it's got a little flashlight up at the top. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, then it's magnetic. Ooh, no, that's, that's handy. It's always nice to have a, have a magnet on your light. And it looks like here on the bottom, it's got a little hook so you can, I guess, hang it somewhere in case there's no, no metal to, for the magnets. It's even got a little, little plug so you can charge it. Okay, so if you charge this light with the wall outlet that's on the back, that's gonna take seven hours, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> kind of crazy. I didn't, wouldn't think it would take that long. And then if you wanna charge it with the solar panel that's on the back, it's gonna take 24 hours. That kinda of sucks. But I mean, the solar panel's only this big, so I guess you can't really expect much. Next, we got this cat branded neck light. Okay, <clears throat> I don't think we need that anymore. 200 lumens. Oh, that sucks. That's actually really uncomfortable. That, that's horrible. It comes dead? Oh, it takes double A's. Oh. Oh. It has double A's in it. It just has these little pieces of cardboard to block it. Oh. There you go. So now you can kind of see, you know, see what you're doing. I don't know. They're kind of uncomfortable, but I guess, I mean, for a hands-free light, I mean, I guess you just kind of got to do what you can, you know, do what you can do. That's high, low, off. That's not bad. I mean, five hours like that on low, that's pretty bright. Next, we got this LED Lenser ML6 Lantern. Oh, this looks like it's going to be complicated. Why is all of these lights micro USB? It is almost 2022. Upgrade to USB-C. This is like a, has a rubber handle that covers the charging ports that says in and out. So I guess this can act like a battery bank. Okay. That's pretty bright. Oh, it's got varying, varying brightnesses. But what's this for? Because this doesn't fit in here. This has to fit in here. I just have to be stupid. Am I this stupid? Oh, turns out I am. It's just a really, really, really tight fit. Let's turn off the lights. Ooh. So that's maximum power all the way up. That's not bad. That's a pretty good, that's a pretty good amount of light. Since we had the lights off, might as well go back to this light. <laughs> Oh, there we go. I couldn't find the button in the dark. Awesome. Oh, you can probably see me perfect. You can see a lot with that. Okay, so I just I just looked up this case or this light is IP66 rated, which means that it is waterproof up to uh, rain or hose directed water, but it is not waterproof if you submerge it. Google even, some websites even say that, that you can like spray it with a pressure washer and it should be okay. But, so you can't submerge it, or you can't submerge it in water, <clears throat> but you can spray it with a water hose or have it in the rain or whatever. So that's pretty much all you'd need. On high, you get four hours, and on low, you get 240 hours. I would assume right there you're getting four hours, and then just hold it down. I guess right there you're getting 240. 
I don't know what you would do with that. Maybe see something inside of a small tent or something. So it's not a bad little light. Last but not least for the lights, we have laser bright something or other. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. This is a bunch of different little pieces. 15% off entire purchase, coupon code BATTLEBOX21. Coupon code can be used two times until August 31st, 2021. I guess I've held onto this for a little bit too long. Strip of four. Oh, these are batteries. Tactical light system. Produced a focus spot. Fully waterproof. Oh. Is this just like a glow stick or something? Oh, there's like different caps that you screw on. I'm a little bit confused. It has like a, another tube, so I guess you could make it shorter if you wanted. And it has this tube that I guess you could make it so you just have the red tip or something. I'm <laughs> I'm really confused. It has comes with this little strap, go like this, and like hanging in a tree or something. I don't know, camping or something in like a really really dark place. Hang this up by like your tent or something so from a distance you could see the little little white light these little pods i guess you can just kind of do whatever you want with so i guess you could rotate this and then just kind of have whatever you want so you could have a red tip and a white body or something i'm really confused it comes with or not comes with but it looks like you can buy a whole variety of different colors Control light emission during stealthy operations. I have no idea. It doesn't really say, I guess it doesn't have a specific use. This thing has a, a picture of like, it looks like somebody diving and it's waterproof. I guess maybe you could drop this underwater so you don't get lost in the water or something. I don't know what this tube does. So this tube is just like a little tiny thing. It's got a, a little sleeve that rolls over the light. I don't know, this thing kind of it's very confusing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> whatever, any, whatever your stealthy light needs are, I'm sure this could d d fit your needs. Whatever it's for. All right, next we have three meals that came in those boxes. We have a breakfast early dawn breakfast skillet, a chicken pesto pasta, and a Southern Survival brand Trail Chili. I'm going to prepare all of these. We'll give them a taste test. All right, so got everything prepared. Let's go ahead and dump everything in the bowls. See how they taste. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't look all that great. What is this even supposed to be? Breakfast skillet? Egg, sausage, peppers, Breakfast seasonings, that does not look super appetizing. Like, what is that? Is that a meatball? This smells really good though. I mean, this smells really good. This is the chicken pesto pasta. Oh, this smells really good. That smells, let's see how this chili. Eh, it smells like, it smells like canned chili, to be honest. The bag by itself <laughs> kind of smells a little weird. Trail chili with spaghetti, beans, cheddar cheese, onions, and beef. Okay. Let's go for this. Let's see what we uh, see what we got here. Not all of that absorbed uh, absorbed the water. You're supposed to let it sit for like 10 minutes, and I think I've let it sit for like close to 20. It's not bad. If you've ever had a cheap gas station breakfast burrito, this tastes like the insides of what those taste like. Those real cheap ones that they have like next to the counter and they have them like on a little heater. The inside of those is exactly what this tastes like. So it's not horrible. Obviously if I was like in a survival situation, this would be absolutely phenomenal. Let's see what about this chicken pesto pasta. This stuff is good. Oh wow. This tastes like something you get, get out of a restaurant. This stuff is really good. I'm gonna eat this whole entire thing once I turn this camera off. That's a 10 out of 10. That, this would be, for a dehydrated meal, this is absolutely amazing. If I went to a restaurant and they served me this, 
I would be stoked. I would not even question it one bit. This stuff is extremely good. It has great flavor. Let's see about this ch <laughs> chili with spaghetti noodles or whatever. Eh, it's not horrible. It's a little bland. It has a, it can use a little bit more flavor. It's nowhere near this. As far as dehydrated meals goes, this is the one to have. These aren't bad at all. I think I've tried a couple of these before that came in battle boxes and they like weren't all that great. These three, as far as dehydrated meal goes, these things are awesome. Now, surprisingly, um, within <laughs> from seven boxes, we only got two different kinds of fire starters. So we got Bigfoot Bushcraft fire plugs. Why is it so hard to? Uh, why, why do they smell so good? They smell like cherry, like a cherry candy. These, these things, obviously they're not edible. They smell delicious. They smell like a cherry candy. So from the directions here, looks like what we're supposed to do is bend the plug in half back and forth to loosen the fibers, rub the two halves against each other in a circular motion to break the plug apart. Light the exposed fibers with a spark from a ferro rod or just use a lighter. We're gonna use, let's just use a regular plate. So we're supposed to break it apart. I think this is just like a like a cotton with like some type of wax or something on it. Ah. And you're supposed to just like rub the ends together. Yeah, there's definitely like some type of uh, like a wax or something on there. All right, let's let's see here. Oh, that was great. That works really good. It's not to uh, smoke out the entire garage, but that that works like a charm. I don't know how well that would work if it got wet. Let's do this. Let's take one of these plugs, just plop it right there in the water, and we'll let that sit there while we look at these. Safer solid fire lighter, fire dragon, blah, blah, blah. 12 big blocks. Oh, these are serious. Fire dragon green and clean solid fuel Lightweight and waterproof, environmentally friendly, quick and easy to ignite, fast boil time. This this is like a a package of like it looks like a package of jelly, honestly, <laughs> like you'd get from McDonald's or something. So what do you do? You just like just squeeze it out. Oh, that puts off a ton of heat. You probably, I don't know how well you can see that because the flame is so, uh, oh, and then see what happens is it burns and it starts to like melt down and spread. That's really good. Is this liquid down here? Oh, this is, this is really flammable. I like that because you could put that like, you could have like a bundle of tinder or something, put that on top. And then since it's going to melt, it could melt down and then it could just, you know, melt down into your entire bundle and like really start a good fire. I like that a lot. Now let's, uh, let's come back to this. Let's see what this does. Ooh. Now it's not, the, the flame is not as big and it's not burning as well. I try not to get it too close to this block because I don't want that to interfere. Mmm. Not as much though. Oh, well, maybe. So the the I mean being soaked in water definitely affects it. So, I mean, obviously, if you can help it, don't let it get wet. But actually, I mean this one's going just fine. I think if I had to pick one, you know, which one I, I wanted to use, I think I would go with this because it's such a huge block. And you could even, I just thought about this, if you have a knife, you could easily cut this in half or fourths easily and then you get four uses out of each little block. And one package has 12 blocks. So, I mean, you could, you could probably even just take a knife and just, just skim off just the tiniest little little sliver of this stuff and use it and maybe get 10 or 15 uses out of one little block. They seem to work great. Now we're just going to move on to uh, miscellaneous items. Just other random stuff that I've got in battle boxes or the, the last seven. We're going to start off with this. This is, 
<laughs> this is a PD-100 gas mask. Useful applications. Fire escape, disaster relief, uh, environmental technology, pesticide, chemical laboratory, paint, chemicals, polish, petroleum, mining. Protects against organic gases and vapors. Chlorine, benzene, acetone, alcohols, methyl bromide, brethyl chloride, chloropicrin, and many others. So it sounds like pretty much anything that can be inhaled, this thing can protect against. So, <laughs> here's our mask. It's got uh, two filters on each side. With a beard, this isn't gonna seal 100%. So, I don't know. If you're bearded like me, you're just screwed, I guess. And it's got these little straps right here, so you can tighten it down. Oh. Alright, I guess we're ready to come in contact with some, uh, I don't even know, end of the world chemicals or whatever. Or maybe we'll walk into a room full of paint fumes or something. I don't know. Alright, I'm going to see if I can go find a, uh, uh, a pool of uh, methyl bromide or some chloropicrin. I'm going to see if I survive. Oh, so, so now that that's over, let's uh, get this one out of the way real fast. We got uh, the Extreme Weather Survival Manual. 214 tips for surviving nature's worst. Let's just uh, go right here, see if we can look for a tip. Water. Safe drinking water is a critical item. Even in winter, you don't have to be hot to be dehydrated. Keep a, gal keep a gallon jug in your trunk per person in the car. There you go. There's your uh, weather tip. Arc band. What is an arc band? Okay. No, these can't be bracelets. There's no way. Oh well, I guess if you had a, I guess if you had a small wrist, they could be a bracelet. I think these are just supposed to be like miniature little little tie downs or something. I'm gonna sacrifice one because I want to see how these. Now these bands, because these bands are, are just, you know, just doubled over and connected. I don't see how they're connected. So you can see right here, I sacrificed one. And you can see that it has just a little tiny metal band that connects it. So that kind of gives me a little bit, uh, a little bit more confidence. I don't know that these would be super useful. Uh, oh, you know what? what I, just, I just realized this. You can connect these together to make them bigger. Probably connect three of these and wear them as like a necklace or something. And then you have three individual small bungee cords. Let's check out a couple of these little smaller items. One is a from Lord and Field, just a uh, leather koozie. It's actually really nice. I've never seen an actual like, I don't know if this is a real leather. Gear Halo Tactical Keep gear fresh, attacks odor, removes moisture, some type of odor blocking pod or something. Oh, I see. As, so as soon as I open that up, you could just smell it overwhelming. It smells like a new pair of shoes, honestly. It actually smells really good. Oh, and it's got, it's got Velcro. Maybe Velcro them together to hang like on to hang up or they smell good I'm sure if you put them in like a pair of boots or you know anything that smells I'm sure they smell great crud shower in a bag cloth go get dirty Let's see what this is all about oh I think I see where we're going here you have a bag of uh, what looks like water and you have a cloth so you're probably supposed to 12 by 12 multi-use washcloth. Before opening outer package. Wow. <laughs> Before opening outer package, smack the inner pod with fist to pop. Once popped, squish soap around, tear package open at notch, unfold cloth, scrub. Okay, let's see if we can uh, maybe fold this back and do, do this the right way maybe. All right, let's seal that up. All right, maybe it's not going to seal. All right, so you're just supposed to pop it. Is it popped? It's, 
like leaking, but it's not like open. What if we do this? Let's just cut this open and then just pour it in here. So you just slosh around with this rag. And now you're supposed to have some type of like a, like a shower, you know, like wipe yourself down. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know about this. It smells weird. How are you supposed to wash the, the soap or whatever it is off? It's got distilled water, cleanser, essential oil blend, lemon lime, grapefruit, orange, bergamot, potassium hydroxide. If anybody has ever gone, or if anybody has ever owned a camping trailer, there's a certain chemical or product that you put inside the sept, not the septic, the, uh, there's a certain chemical that you put in the black tank of like an RV that is like to make the sewage like not smell. This smells exactly like that chemical. It has a, like a super distinct smell. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. Let's go ahead and take a look at this thing. So this, if I remember right, I think I saw a commercial for this one time. And it's one of those things that like you put around your wrist and then if you're like drowning or you're in water or something, you can pull a string and a thing is gonna inflate and then like pull you up to the top, like in the ocean or whatever. Yeah, so like a picture here. <clears throat> I don't know, we'll just wing it like we do everything else. This cylinder screws into here and we just roll this bad boy up and this goes like, this, I guess, and we put it in here like this. And this thing closes, and I would assume you leave this out, because this is your, your thing. Oh, you know what I remember? I think you're supposed to wear this, uh, like on your waist, like a belt. All right, so, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little bit nervous. So you wear this on your, on your waist, I'm pretty sure. Let's just pretend that it's on my waist, and we go to pull this, it's gonna happen. <sighs> Three, two. Wow, that popped out fast. It's inflated. So if this is on your waist, this would inflate and then it would start pulling you up to the top. That worked incredibly well. I thought this was like a one way valve. Or I thought this was like a, uh, a valve to let all the air out. I don't think there is a valve to let the air out. This looks like it's to uh, blow it up. It is, it's a one way valve to blow it up. Oh, you can, you can hold this valve down to let all the air out. That's cool, so that way you can pull this string, let this inflate with the CO2, get, you know, start pulling you up, and once you're on top of the water, you can keep it inflated just by breathing into it. So that, that is, this thing is called a rest tube, just in case anybody's interested. Let's go ahead and go over some uh, <clears throat> small easy ones. <laughs> so one thing I got was a pair of socks. Uh, these are lightweight merino wool socks. 80% merino wool, 16% polyester, 2% nylon, 2% spandex, and it says 100% guaranteed. So obviously we all know how socks work. Uh, emergency blanket. I'm not going to open this because We've been over these before, and I have a plan for this one. So this is just a mylar blanket, you know, typical uh, emergency blanket that you just put as close to your skin as possible when it kind of turns you into a little bit of a uh, baked potato, so. And then next we have these things called stacks that look like just little, just like little plastic containers. Oh, now that's interesting. See, whenever I saw this in the box, I thought that these were all just sitting on top of each other. I did not realize that these lock together. I like this a million times more now. Because I was looking at this in the box and I was thinking, like, that's kind of stupid. Why would you need little containers? But the fact that these lock together is so cool. I don't know what you would put in them. Maybe, like, some salt and pepper or maybe a little bit of some spices or some uh, maybe some fire starters or something I like that so what we got here quick cord 
built-in cutter, 12-hour emergency, 12-hour emergency signal, tangle-free power cord. Okay, safety light stick, paracord. We got this thing. Don't know what the deal is with that. What are we doing here? Why do we have an empty plastic thing? This is really not going to show me like what you do. It has a QR code, scan for loading instructions. Why don't you just tell me how to do it? Why you got to make me watch instructions? Probably just stick the cord in here. Well, I guess I'm going to have to watch some directions. All right, <laughs> I watched the video. You'll see why it's so funny here in a minute. So they say you're supposed to just take this paracord and you are supposed to feed it through here, pull it through this end, and feed this through this cap, snap the cap on, and then you are supposed to Take, the, take the, the glow stick, feed the paracord through here, just tie a basic knot there, and then this goes here. While the glow stick sits in here, feed this Velcro through here, and that keeps the glow stick in place. So then you take the rest of this paracord, and once you take the rest of it, you're supposed to just, it says just shove it all down. So you just cram it all in here, I don't even know if you can cram all this cord down in here. Okay, well that seems... I don't think I'm about to cram all that in there. Maybe if you take your time with it a little bit better. So once you get all of it in there, what you do is you take the, the cap, feed this end through the cap, put the cap on there, and then now you have that end right there that's going to hold your paracord. So now what you have is a paracord dispenser on this end so you can pull out your paracord. Say you needed, you know, this much paracord. Now you can take this, it has a cutter built in right here, boom, and you can cut your piece of paracord, you know, tie whatever up, you know, do whatever you're going to do. A little thing right here that is supposed to hold your paracord. I don't know about that. I think it's so small. Maybe if you use the back end of your knife, you can... I don't know, that holder... That holder is a horrible design. There's no way you're gonna get that paracord in there. Yeah, okay. That that holder, that design sucks. But anyway, so the other thing that you're, so the whole reason you have this glow stick here, and this, this is what was so funny, is so you have a paracord dispenser on one end, and if you're in, they said in the video, they say whenever you're out on a mission. So I guess you're only using this if you're, if you're out on a, on a mission. So take this out on your mission with you, and if you need rescued from your mission, you take, take the Velcro off, Throw it away, because you're on a mission. You don't need that. Take the glow stick out, mix the glow stick up, and then you're gonna pull the paracord out, however far you want, and then the cap has a little lock thing in there, and you're gonna lock it. So now that you have this out here, now you can swing this around, and then this is gonna, swinging this thing around is apparently gonna let people know that you need help. And in the nighttime, whenever this makes a completely solid uh, green circle, up in the sky to an airplane, it's not gonna look like some type of alien activity. It's gonna, they're gonna know that you need help. This dispenser idea is kinda cool. This whole glow stick and keeping this to, to spin around in case you need rescued or something. I'm sure that would work if the right person saw it. I think it's a little bit weird, <laughs> but that is the quick cord. All right, so it looks like we've got uh, two different types of Portable water filter, or this is a portable water filter pump. And this just says rapid pure water purification. This one's probably, this one looks rather simple. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think this is gonna be pretty simple. Yeah, yeah, seems simple enough to me. Okay, so you got this little tiny filter here. So you just put the filter inside this little plastic housing, and then you just push that on there. It shows here in the picture, it shows you connecting this to like a water bottle, but you know I didn't I didn't get a water bottle to connect it to, so I guess you could I guess one option is that you could buy whatever water bottle they have, and you could just drop this in the water bottle and then cut this tube to length, or just I guess bring this tube up through the top of the water bottle and then just drink it like that. I guess you could just <laughs> just get like a container of water or whatever, and then just drop this in it, and then you can just. 
and you can just drink water that way. I don't know if you're supposed to like get rid of this filter once it gets wet. I have no idea what the rules are with that. Survivor Filter Pro Pump, lab tested, outdoor approved. Removes 99.999% of the virus, staph, and bacteria. 100,000 liter lifespan this thing is supposed to have. That's quite a bit. That would be more than enough for any survival situation. Let's see how this thing works. We got that thing. And we got a bag. I thought this was gonna be easy. Oh, I can just look at the picture. I think I understand where this is going. Let's see here. Maybe you gonna screw this thing. This is some type of filter. This is the filter or one of the filters. There's a filter here and there's a filter in here. Looks like you're just supposed to put this hose on here, put this in water, put this hose here, and then put this into, you know, whatever water bottle or whatever. And then you're supposed to pump it. That's how it looks like. Technically, you're supposed to use this syringe to like prime the filters and stuff, I guess to do it properly. I don't really care about that. Plop that into your, uh, your dirty water, your creek or whatever. We'll just pump some water into this. Oh, look at that. That's really fast, too. Th this is a really nice way to get clean water. It's because, you, I mean, you could fill up a canteen in no time with this thing. 100,000 liter lifespan. 100,000 liters? I like this. This is, this is nice. It's fast. You could set this up and leave it somewhere. You could fill up a bottle in no time. I like this a lot. More small stuff. Let's just go ahead and get this whole pile of stuff out of the way. We have Duraderm Sport. Kills, seals, protects, and heals. Advanced skin repair. Prevents infection, promotes healing. Antiseptic single unit container. So this is some type of antiseptic, antiseptic uh, liquid or something. Hold the applicator upside down and continue to squeeze firmly while applying liquid evenly over and around the wound. Oh, okay. You gotta break it. It's like a vial. Ah, I think I see what this is. It's almost like if you've ever, whenever you were like in elementary school, if you ever put uh, glue on your hand and then let it dry and then you like peeled it off, it's almost just like that. Like a liquid band-aid almost. Like you just put it over your cut and then now you have like a protective layer over top of it. Oh yeah. And then it peels off. Ah, it, doesn't, it doesn't peel off super well, like a liquid band-aid. That is super, that would be super, super useful. Especially if you're out in the middle of nowhere. If you get an infection or something, it could be life or death. That's actually pretty cool. I've never heard of that. Let's see what else we got here. First line CLP oil. Directions. Ensure all firearms are unloaded. First line synthetic CLP gun oil is formulated for maximum gun and environmental protection. Okay, so this is like a this is a gun oil. I'm sure you could probably use this like for knives to keep them protected or whatever. Ah. Uh, nice. So it's just like a a little pin full of gun oil. So that way you can you know, if you have your gun out in the field or whatever and it jams up, you can add a little oil or... I'm sure if your knife gets stiff, you can just add a little oil down in here or whatever. So that's pretty cool. Just a little oil pen. We got... what we got here? Speed hook? Okay, so this this is interesting. I've never seen anything like this. So this is like a... like a, it's, it's like a... Uh, like a fishing booby trap, kind of. So you would put your fishing line here on this, and this would go up to your pole. So, and then this would hang down into the water, and it's like a T shape. And then your bait would go down here on this hook. So then what you do, before you throw it in there, you take this, and you bend this down, and it's a big spring. So you would cast this into the water, and then let this hook hang down here. And then whenever a fish bites, well, I don't know how well you can even see that. <laughs> anyway, so whenever this is stuck like this, and it has a little hook on it, almost like a mouse trap. Works just like a mouse trap. So it has this spring, and then the hook is down here. So whenever something bites on it, it'll spring open, and when it springs open, it'll pull the hook and set the hook inside your fish. Don't know how well that would work. <laughs> a big contraption to have under the water. Very, very cool idea though. Hero clip. What are we supposed to be doing with this thing? A hook so you can like put this on some rope or something and then just like hang stuff off of it I guess. Hang this somewhere and then clip something onto this. Shows them like holding a like a bicycle or something. I guess this could be useful in some way. Next we got Save Aqua. Now I don't even have a way to test this but this appears to be just like a, a some type of valve that you install into some type of uh, water container 
and then it slows the flow of water. Or no, it's a self-closing tap so that you don't lose any water. Definitely handy if you have a limited amount of water. Uh, I do not have a way to test it, so we're not going to test it. Then this tactical gun and knife care kit. This just seems like a ooh nice microfiber. I guess this is just an overall gun and knife kit. We have some ceramic gun sealant, gun, knife, and bow protection. We have a matte finish tactical cleaner. Oh, it's a polish. Does anybody really polish their guns or their knives? Okay, so that's pretty cool. Just an overall care kit. We have some type of multi-tool with a tie-down feature thing. Huh? Oh, I gotcha. All right, so this is a multi-tool. It's got a can opener, or a bottle opener, two flathead screwdrivers right here, a very small, like, screwdriver with some type of, like, nut driver here, and then it's got this, which is the main thing, which is a hook. So it's got a hook on this end, and it's got a hook on this end. And it has this little button here that you can push, so that you could, you know, tie this to something, and then tie this to something and tie it down. And this isn't gonna come apart. And it says that you can pull 150 pounds. That regular paracord could fit through here, feed your own length of paracord through here, and make this way more than six feet wrapped around or secure it or whatever you wanna do. <laughs> Maybe don't wrap it around. Maybe secure it in a better way. So that's that. Now we have two things that I honestly <laughs> do not know what they are. Uh, they just look similar, so I put them in the same pile. This one says reversible blanket on it. This one, I honestly have absolutely no idea. So let's start with this one first. Okay, it's got a strap. It's got two shoulder straps. Uh-huh. It's got a handle here. It's got two shoulder straps. Like it's got like these like wings on the... <laughs> This is literally leaving me with more questions than answers. Like, is this what you do? You hide in it like a, like some type of hobbit? And then like, wrap these around like some type of burrito or something? Apparatus that's supposed to like, maybe keep you dry or something? I have absolutely no idea whatsoever. It looks like maybe, I thought I, since it had straps on it, I was thinking that maybe it was like, some type of contraption that you wear like if you have like a backpack on you put this like over your backpack and then it keeps like you and your backpack dry or something like none of that makes sense the parts on the bottom they look like they're supposed to like wrap around your legs but they're like this big no idea what you're supposed to do with this at all there was not a single piece of instruction c-a-l-i-l-o-h-a -L -L maybe somebody has one of these and they can describe this oh these clips go to these that makes even less sense. Either this thing is very complicated or I am just like really, really stupid. This thing, this makes naturally no sense whatsoever. All right, so it turns out per usual, I have no idea what I'm talking about. This is not something that you wear, but well, it kind of is. So this is what this thing is. It's actually pretty cool. So this is a, a thing that you use to like pack up a bunch of stuff. Like you can pack up like a bunch of like blankets or pillows or like pretty much whatever you want. And you extend this thing out and then you, you know, pile all your stuff on here. Say you got like blankets and pillows and a tent or whatever. You pile all that in here and then you take these, these things and then just like wrap them up in here. And then you take, you can take these straps and then cinch everything down. And then you can roll this up and then that's why this is elastic, not to, not to go around your head, but so then you roll, roll it all up in this elastic and then tie everything down and then you have the backpack straps so that you can wear it like a big backpack. Or you can uh, hook up this strap. That's actually, so that actually makes a lot more sense. I like that a lot better. I don't know why I thought this was something that you like would wear. So next on the list is Oh, this is from that same company, Cali Loa. Now this is a reversible blanket. I almost guarantee that this is never going, going to fit back in this bag. Oh yeah, there's no way this is ever going to fit back in this bag. Oh, wait a minute. It is the bag to make itself the bag. 
That's pretty cool. Okay, it's that simple. It's literally just a uh, just a reversible blanket. That's it. It's got like it's got like cotton in it, <laughs> just like periodically. I guess to kind of give you some sense of something soft. Literally just that simple. It's just a reversible blanket. Um, I don't know if it's waterproof. It doesn't say waterproof anywhere on it. It's kind of this like plasticky material. So I would assume that you could maybe sit this down on like wet ground or something and then the moisture wouldn't soak through. But I don't know 100%. I'm, I'm really gonna be impressed if all of this goes right back in. It's all gonna fit. It's really gonna fit. Come on, all you gotta do, all you gotta do is just zip closed. If we can get this thing to zip closed, that'd be awesome. Oh, there we go. We got it back in the bag. I really like that, especially that it has its own bag that it's like built into itself because everybody knows that most of this stuff that fits like, like a tent, for example, like whenever you roll the tent and, it, and you take it out of the original bag, it never fits back in. Anything that's this tight inside of a bag never goes back inside. So I'm happy to see that this actually will. Speaking of bags, we have two bags for our last items. One is this. This is just one big, this is from uh, Lord and Field, which we looked at three or four items from them now. This is literally just one big leather duffel bag. It's got like a, it's got like fur on the inside. Obviously not like, you know, outdoor rated, like you're not gonna go camping with this or anything, but as like a normal like travel bag, just as like a duffel bag to, I don't know, take on a plane, take on a vacation or something. This thing will be plenty big. Looks nice. And last but not least, we have one more bag. This is just a, some type of, uh, what, waterproof bag, is that what it says? I don't think it claims waterproof, but it is a vacuum bag. And it's got, the whole top here is like a Ziploc bag. And you, so you, you know, pile all your stuff in here. And then you zip lock it shut. Which this is, I'm gonna be completely honest with you, this zip lock on this bag sucks. Like it's almost impossible to get it all closed up back to the way it was. You have this valve right here that you just open up and then you can squeeze all the air out of it, close your valve off. All your stuff is vacuum sealed inside the bag. That's the last thing. I know this one was uh, a little bit longer than normal, maybe boring for some people. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.